Monoclonal antibody manufacturing consists of a long and a complex process train. Protein A column is the most significant process step, and an expensive one as well. Let's refer to steps prior to protein A column as upstream, and steps which follow protein A column as downstream. To achieve higher yield from milligrams to gram, the cell titers have been increased. A benefit is usually associated with cost. As the cell titers rocketed, the level of impurities like DNA, host cell protein, have also increased. The traditional clarification techniques are single step, single device performing a single action. This approach results in fluid wastage. These techniques also have high failure rate, longer downtime and increased associated risks. As the impurities are now competing with the antibodies to bind to the protein A, the purity of the eluted product is diminished. As these impurities are stuck on the column, harmful chemicals are required to clean it. As a result, the number of cycles the column can perform is reduced. At 3M, we have 46 different technology platforms. This allows us to approach a problem in different ways. We want to change the conventional approach to clarification processes. Our solution is to use a targeted purification technique early in the process and prior to protein A column. This is where Emphase AEX Hybrid Purifier comes in. An inspired product which is packed with science and technology. Emphase AEX Hybrid Purifier is a single device which performs multiple actions. The hybrid purifier provides DNA clearance of 4 LRV, bio burden reduction of 6 LRV and HCP reduction of up to 35%. This results in efficiency by reducing column fade, by reducing the number of chromatography stages. The hybrid purifier provides a plug and play chromatographic function without the need for column packing. Purity provides high fluid purity as early as possible in the upstream process provides better protection to the expensive Protein A column, increased MAB purity up to 99.9% .9 post Protein A column. Economics reduces the cost of ownership, simplifies the process train resulting in time and cost efficiencies, enhances Protein A performance and life. If you look at you know, more concrete examples, so here are five companies, nine MAP products. This, so this is kind of all across the industry. Some of them are sort of your peer organization, contract manufacturing. Abvi is a big pharma uh, product developer, manufacturer. And if you compare you know, the way that they operate the process uh, across all of these companies, so 3M here is our internal purification of a product that's expressed in some of the cell lines that we license from, from the industry. You can see very, very large variation. In fact, look at the air bars. They're either comparable to the average or they're greater than the average. And so this is what we see all the time, right? So if, if, we, go, if, if, if we look at three products across, you know, let's say AbbVie or, or you know, other things like you know, Regeneron is a company that we've presented with extensively. If you utilize a conventional platform, you can get you know, 200 parts per million in one case, you can get 2,000 in the other case. And, 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 and people have sort of come to accept that, and, and because of that, every single product causes you to engineer the process essentially from scratch. But so what's inside the M phase, right? So how do you implement charge in a turbid stream, right? So what we did was that instead of using a resin or a membrane, we went with a non-porous material. So essentially it's this random arrangement of polypropylene fibers that then we, what we do is that we utilize you know, proprietary technology in order to graft and grow these long, essentially, hairs that are all positively charged using Q chemistry along their backbone. So it's basically this sort of free flop and sea of charge where if you are negatively charged, you will sort of get stuck in it. If you are positively charged or not charged at all, you will fly through it as if it's not even there because it's so sparse. Right? There's no, for example, this, this material does not present any pressure differential even at flow rate of 10 bed volumes per minute. Okay? I mean, you can flow at 100 bed volumes per minute, it still won't present any, any pressure differential.
So if you were to go and you, if you were to use something as a barometer, what is the most important thing that you want to capture, right? That you know, various key opinion leaders in the industry and academia is that what is, what is the most important contaminant that interferes with protein A? And we found that it was chromatin. So chromatin does interact with both protein A ligand and your IgG, and that has been very well characterized by people like Pete Gagnon, but also you know, by people at BMS and Genentech. And, and this is what limits the reproducibility and the performance of the column. So then we looked at, well, how good is this device compared to, for example, a highly charged depth filter? So this is the, and so you can see that Emphase just has a lot higher charge capacity because it has more than two orders of magnitude higher charge that's in it. In the filter, the primary clarification is through size, and so charge is more of a bonus that's mixed into the resin. It's also Q, whereas here it's all charge. And so this is the magic or sort of the main differentiator here compared to how people do clarification normally today, is that you're able to easily reduce DNA from about 10 to the seventh parts per billion, which is what it is in your cell culture, to about 10 to the second, so incredibly low. Uh, this is the transition from, like what I told you, that when the when the NN exchange capacity exhausts, you start going from in an exchange device where everything is kind of in steady state. It's just like you're running a column to a membrane. So this is this is essentially your membrane clogging up as the particles now tunnel through the non-woven, which is non-charged anymore, and just hit the membrane. And so in real life, you never want to get into this point. You always want to size this by charge and never by pressure. Right? So in a typical situation, you never pick up any pressure on this device, it just kind of runs through and that's it, you're done. So then, does, do these advantages translate across protein A? So this is, a, this is a test that we did with your peer organization in the United States, so this is a global, large global contract manufacturer. They utilize our technology in the United States, so they typically utilize you know, two um, stages of depth filtration, an SP grade and a ZB grade. When we introduced this device to them, you know, the easiest thing was simply let's replace the second grade with the second stage with emphase. So okay, so so we did that. We put it through protein A. They used the lies, they utilize uh, G Meb Select Sure LX. So it's a pretty standard high capacity resin from G. So then we went through viral inactivation, then viral inactivation neutralization, and we got very different results. Is that for example, there is no post protein A viral inactivation turbidity is that it stays completely clear. The second is that the, the purity is much, much higher, is that you are really at, you know, starting to get to actual injectable purity. You know, this is probably one very easy chromatographic or dye filtration step away in order to get, you, to get you to where you want to be. The other thing is that we loaded the same amount of material, but the material came, in, came out in much more concentrated peak is that, the, is that the column worked a lot more efficiently because you don't have sort of this DNA component dragging and, you know, and spreading the peak. And so what we found was that here is that your dynamics of your capture step completely changes, is that it becomes now this very simple, highly controllable step without any precipitation, with nothing. You know, it comes in, it comes out, pressure remains low on the column, there's no, there's no problem anymore. That's how this strategy really starts to restructure the strategy by which you carry out your process. So this is the same data set, but now what I did was that I've overlaid uh, you know, what happens when you utilize the charge using emphase in that process and you compare the post-protein data. And you can see that yes, in fact you can, is that this, this, this uh, phenomenon is biochemical phenomenon, it's not you know, limited to cell line or how you operate the protein A, is that we are changing the biochemistry of the system by removing the DNA very early on. And so that leads to two things, is that number one, you're very pure. I mean, typically, you know, our expectation is you know, 250 parts per, per million or below, as measured by ELISA. And look at the, how small the error bars are. So essentially, you know what purity you're gonna hit in your map process, even before you start building it. And, and, uh, and obviously, we don't know anything about cell lines that, that these companies use. Some of them, we don't even know how they run their protein A, but yet, it always comes out the same answer. And so, and, and so now you can start to think about the fact that yes, in fact, you can platform it and to platform it very quickly. You know, we have, a, we have, we have um, a, you know, a customer, at least one customer, who has really stopped engineering the polishing trains because they can get such high purity straight out of the protein A 
that you know for you know up to phase two clinical manufacturing they just utilize they just blindly throw their proteins their candidates through this process the only time that they put in a polisher is when they have to is when they have high percentage of high molecular weight aggregates so then they you know put in keptod here or whatever it is that they use and so they get that but in terms of process related contaminants they basically put in a you know they just throw on a standard membrane adsorber for viral claim and an nanofilter and that's it but there is no it's all standard for every single protein they do absolutely no engineering but if you look at large scale manufacturing what you want is yield and we can very quickly even without sort of considering the fact that you can go you can downsize your column to membrane adsorber here and having a lot of other quite advanced value propositions that that this uh, strategy allows you to do we can look at very simple ones so so for example you know, typically our customers utilize, you know, quite a lot of um, membranes uh, at the clarification stage, and there is some loss of the product there. By allowing you to shrink that, you actually gain a couple of percent of your product, and, and this can be easily demonstrated. Not having uh, this turbidity uh, post, post viral inactivation doesn't bring down your product. And we've seen everything from, you know, 1% to 5% you know, yield. That's, that's a typical thing, and it's not unusual when you have a phase change. You know, obviously your product PI is very high, so it's away from the pH where you're cycling, but some of the product will get denatured in that stage. So if you, if you then go and incorporate all of this uh, into a model, so we use this Biosol from Biofarm, it's sort of now the standard for you know, looking at manufacturing costs, right? And so this is the data that we did with BMS. So this is sort of based on their uh, single-use facility for their new molecules is that you can see that by going by implementing the M phase and some of these changes right the main thing is that your DSP yield goes up from 48 percent to 55 percent and that's what drives about a 10 to 11 percent reduction cost because you've simply you're simply producing more product in the same in the same footprint so the, the point of illustrating this is that is that yes the cost starts to come out quite quickly simply depends on how much of these uh, advantages you are able to capture.